Hello everybody and a very warm welcome to a very special mini-series right here on Sparkling Autos. Yes, hello and a very warm welcome back to the Sparkling Autos YouTube channel. Something very different over the course of the next few videos. No quick test Tuesdays, in fact no product reviews at all. This is just me getting back to basics, using products that I trust, products that I've tried and tested, and products that I know are going to get the job done, bringing this absolutely filthy Peugeot 108 back up to the standard that all cars should be. And a very brief backstory on how the car has ended up in this condition, despite the fact that, believe it or not, it actually only has around 5,000 miles on the clock. Well, before the comment section is filled with people asking how an owner can let the car get this bad, I should explain that the car is actually owned by a family member, one who, quite frankly, isn't physically capable of cleaning the car themselves, and they have asked me on numerous occasions if I would be able to do it for them. But as they fully understood, and of course, as many of the regular viewers will know, over the past 12 to 18 months, I have had other commitments out of sight of the channel, which have had to take priority. However, on a positive note, all of that extra time has simply allowed even more moss to grow in the car. So as you can see, I have quite a lot of work ahead of me. In fact, I actually spent around 12 hours on this car on the day. However, a large portion of that time was taken up with the YouTube stuff, i.e. moving cameras about, not to mention the numerous absolutely essential coffee breaks in the middle of it all. But rather than squeeze 12 hours worth of footage into a 10 or 15 minute video, I've decided to stretch this over a small series of videos and hopefully you enjoy every one of them. So we're going to start off with the engine bay, which despite the condition of the outside of the car, actually isn't really all that bad, it just needs a quick going over and that's exactly what we're going to do. And once the engine bay is sorted out, I can get cracking with the wheels and then proceed with the rest of the car. So without wasting any more of your time, let's get on with it. So as I said in the introduction, despite the condition of the outside of the car, given the fact there's only around 5,000 miles on it, the engine bay wasn't really too bad. So I've just gone over it with a bit of Auto Glim engine machine cleaner and an old brush, and then I'm going to rinse it off gently with the garden hose. I didn't use any pressure washer today, as there simply was no need for it. The only area I really needed to focus on was the drain holes in the scuttle panel, making sure they were clear so that any rainwater or scream wash that was used had somewhere to go and didn't pull up inside the scuttle panel. Now thankfully on this occasion, as I usually find to be the case, the cleaning chemicals alone, along with a bit of valid water pressure, was more than enough to clear these holes, as you can see. However, on some occasions you may indeed need some sort of mechanical assistance here, i.e. a piece of wire or something that you can safely put down the drain hole to unblock it. But I'm sure it goes without saying, although I'm saying it anyway, to be very careful when carrying out this procedure, just so as not to damage anything within the drain hole. And on the subject of safe practices, you may notice that on this occasion I didn't feel the need to wrap anything around the alternator, simply because I know that the water pressure from the garden hose alone isn't going to do any harm. However, you may notice that it did indeed put a rubber glove over the air intake pipe, which is normally situated around the front grill area, but for some reason in this car is slap bang in the middle of the engine bay. And a car's air box, just like a human lung, is one place you definitely do not want to ingest any water. And speaking of water, I'm just going down now with an old cloth, drying off any water from the surface to reduce the risks of water spotting.
And there we are, job done. So in real time that was actually only about 5 minutes I spent on the engine bay and you can see the difference it's made. It might not have been too bad to begin with, but even just 5 minutes with a ready to use product and it's made a heck of a difference. Especially now that we can actually see where those drain holes were. And that is step 1 complete. So now it's time to get the bonnet closed down, get the car jacked up and get all 4 wheels cleaned. Onto the wheels now, and whilst I'm not actually reviewing products, I'll briefly explain what I'm using. So first of all, there's a bucket made up with some Garage Therapy 1 wheel shampoo, some Auto Brake Direct wheel and tyre cleaner mixed to 2 to 1, and although that product is more than capable of cleaning tyres, I'm also going to use another favourite of mine, Auto Glands Rebound. So yes, ignoring the very obvious continuity error there at the start, whilst mixing the products up, you could see the pre-washed products dwelling on the car. Yes, it has indeed been pre-washed prior to this, but we're going to look at that more in the next video. For now, let's get the wheels done. So I've sprayed the Auto Glance Rebound onto the tyres, let it dwell for a minute whilst I then sprayed the wheel, and we're now going to give the tyre a good scrub. And you'll notice the wheel is jacked up off the ground here. Now this has a couple of major benefits. One, it allows a full rotation of the wheel, which means when it comes to cleaning out the wheel barrels, I don't need to worry about squeezing brushes into the gaps between the wheel barrel and the brake calipers. And the second major advantage is it's much easier on the wrists if you can just turn the wheel to suit where you are, rather than have to constantly twist and angle your hands and wrists to suit the shape of the wheels. I also find it's important or beneficial to clean out your brushes in between passes before putting them back in the bucket. You notice this more so by the time you get to the end of the fourth wheel that your wheel wash bucket isn't full of black, dirty, contaminated water. And now you can see exactly what I mean by being able to turn the wheel and just how much easier it makes this job. I'm not having to turn my arms or wrists into any funny angles and I just find this a much more efficient way to clean the wheels. And now moving on to the garage therapy wheel mitt to clean in behind the spokes. Onto the arches now and I will openly and honestly admit my schoolboy error here in that when I was doing the pre-wash I mentioned earlier, I hadn't jacked the wheel up at that stage and only gave in around the arches a quick blast out. Now ordinarily this probably wouldn't be an issue but I think I just underestimated how much muck there would be in around the top of the arch, as we're about to find out. And if you think that looks bad, give it a few more seconds. There's nothing like squirting two years of road muck over a wheel you've just spent five minutes cleaning. But thankfully it's wet enough and it easily hoses off, no harm done. So now with the almost go-kart sized Peugeot diamond cut wheels all cleaned up, it's time to give these Continental tyres a second hit of the rebound, just so that when the time comes to dress them at the end of the process, they'll be in great condition to take that dressing. And there we are then, so when the foam's all white, the tyres are alright. So that's the first wheel and arch done, I just need to repeat that three times and whilst I do that, you can take a look at what's coming up in the next episode. <laughs>